Summer Slam 2024 in the books from Cleveland. We're here to recap, review it with an overload of a lot of drama and more on the Heel of the Ring podcast on the Sports Jedi Network. Let's get ready. Acknowledge me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Heal the Ring podcast here on the Sports Jedi Network. We're going to review SummerSlam 2024. That's in the books from Cleveland. My goodness, uh, what a premium live event. We had a lot of different things. We, have a, we had a returning Roman Reigns, um, a battle between Drew and CM Punk. Does it continue? And, of course, four title changes with a lot of overload of drama Setting the stage for a what I'm going to say an exciting 2024 um, year that we're starting to usher in the era of the Netflix streaming. Uh, you know, say goodbye to the PG-13, maybe the rated R uh, renaissance of the WWE. We all know they're going to Netflix in January. The CW commercials are out for NXT going on you over the air antenna to the CW network, as well as SmackDown moving the Fo- out of Fox into the USA network. So a lot of different things, moving parts in the world of wrestling in the WWE and so forth. Welcome everyone to the program. If you have not heard us before or not seen us before, we are the Heal the Ring podcast here on the Sports Jedi Network. We tend to do a lot of different walk-alongs with when it comes to wrestling wwe nxt and of course tna um yes we actually live in orlando we we're two are two out of our three founding members um are here in orlando that go to the nxt brand so just in case you're familiarizing yourself you're getting to know us or you're meeting us for the first time we actually attend these nxt we, we are boots to the ground when it comes to the nxt brand we're mostly we we are have a soft spot for nxt so let's talk about this summer slam um, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of things. We we kicked it off, of course, with Jelly Roll playing his music, singing uh, America, God Bless America, then into his hit single. I had no problem that Jelly Roll is not my cup of coffee of music. Um, I understand that you want to cater to music to all fans, and he's been gracious enough to showcase his talent in the WWE. Listen, it's been going on since WrestleMania 1. You know where you bring celebrities either from the music the, the movies industries from other sports and that's what wrestling is about it's a celebration of all all different type of sports entertainment music culture and so forth so i did have you know i yeah i might have goofed around and made a couple of funny jokes about the uh performance of jelly roll not my cup of coffee but it, it is needed in the world of wrestling in my opinion so i'm going to be for, foremost transparent with that um yeah, it's needed Good, he did a good job there, but it started off opening with a hell of a match. Uh, Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley with the for the women's world championship. Now everybody wants to know that love triangle, that story. But the storyline here is that both women have injured each other in the past. We all know Rhea Lip, Ripley caused Liv some time away from the ring, and vice versa. Liv recently with Rhea Ripley's shoulder um, out of commission. The match started off extremely intense. We had Dernie Dominic at ringside with Rhea Ripley, a company where a lot of people were skeptic. Where is Dirty Dom standing in this whole drama, in this triangle? The tensions begin. Um, 
Of course, you looked, you saw Liv Morgan with the shenanigans, classic heel one on one, running away from her opponent. Looked terrified at Rhea Ripley at times. Rhea psyching her out, making her chase the cat and mouse chase. Rhea Ripley gets finally hands on Liv. They go back and forth. Moments of the match where the shoulder looks like it might have been out of place or injured from Rhea Ripley, or she sold it, or at least you know made a seam at home that it was dislocated again. One of the shots that went really hard and and it was like wow when rhea ripley just takes the shoulder and rams it right into the announce table and kind of put it back in place telling that story that she has a bum shoulder and it, and she's tolerance of pain she wants her she wants her mommy wants her title back at all costs and at all elevation um loved it you know morgan countered the rip tie with a ddt and so forth back and forth they go where the shoulders came an issue and there's a chair involved. Rhea Ripley so so hell bent to just want to destroy Liv Morgan. You know, Liv want, on her revenge tour wants to take away Dirty Dom, her her Latino heat, like she calls. Breaking up the clubhouse at Judgment Day, dividing the, the Judgment Day um nucleus that they have. And mommy wants to make this woman, this Jezebel pay. And the story here mommy was about to go into a or rhea ripley was about to go into a dark place with that chair and hit live with that chair and really make her pay and dominic intervenes and dominic at the moment makes sense you can't use the chair because if you hit the chair you're not getting the title back and he was actually at that point of time of the match the voice of reasoning and it's true referee ready to call that disqualification once rhea ripley annihilates Liv Morgan with the chair and and better better heads or cooler heads prevail from Dominic Mysterio, but then the plot thickens. They the back and forth where Dominic slides the chair in the ring for for Liv to use. Liv uses to her discretion and she retains her title. Um, where everyone's like, "Whoa, it's happening!" And from a moment of uh, ooh's ahs or drama, Dominic picks up Liv Morgan and he plants a hell of a kiss onto Liv Morgan and was like whoa this is going to continue um here to late summer into the early fall possibly we all know in October we have bad blood we have the bash of Berlin coming up but at bad blood and in, and I think the right person went over in my opinion and here's the reason why I mean everyone can say yeah I agree it's a lot of agreeers yes men um I want to break it down why in my at least in my opinion um, of course these are my opinions i understand not everyone's going to agree with it but this is just my thoughts and my opinions on on this matter is if Liv morgan were to lose that title to to real ripley let's say last night at SummerSlam, what is next for for Liv? she can get another rematch i mean eh, you could but you're not gonna have the hot potato of the title rhea ripley there's always listen dusty Rhodes has said it many times there's always there's more money in the chase than the champion being the champion and if Rhea would have won i don't think wwe has made any um female adversary hot enough to be the number one contender yet i mean that can happen in the next few weeks here on raw going forward but they haven't established on raw who is the next dominant female and, and it's going to be tough if you bring a returning star and I'm going to use Raquel Rodriguez and all of a sudden you place her in there. It, it, it's not going to hit right away. You got to heat up. You got to warm up. You got to elevate some of these women. And if Liv would have dropped the title, then what, what's next for Rhea? There would have been no one there for Rhea. Now you could extend the storyline um, with the drama with why did Dirty Dom, we all want to know tomorrow, Monday Night Raw, why did Dirty Dom turn on Rhea Ripley what was the cause was it because the abandonment you know while she was injured she was so worried focused on her injury she totally lost went incommunicado with Dominic you know we always heard um and why did she communicate more with Damien Priest was he was Dominic jealous of that relationship between Dominic between uh Damien Priest and Rhea Ripley while she's away you know and I know like you know when we talk about the heel the ring crew as let's talk about it as men and all the men that are listening to us how much more how much more of a man could have resisted on that on a, on a live morgan seducing and to, and, tempt, and tempting a dominic mysterio how much you know he lasted or he over withstand as much as possible because she other than just being completely in her birthday suit 
pretty much threw herself on Dominic Mysterio, and Dominic resisted until the very end when we least expect that we thought all things were honky dory and boom he he typical heel fashion and boy SummerSlam is the ultimate dominic mysterio heel turn my goodness he has been he, dominic mysterio and SummerSlam is synonymous from the custody match on the, you know um all the way to when he turned on his father and rated our superstar edge and now here we're turning on rhea ripley um, wow, that Dominic Mysterio knows how to make an impact on a SummerSlam. What is next here? So we want to find out what tunes in for Monday Night Raw. I thought the match was phenomenal. We're from the storyline wise, the drama, the the heel turn. Although most of us kind of knew. Let's say let's say eighty percent of us had an idea that Dominic was going to turn on. on but they, but here's the one thing, the wonderful thing about it. Sometimes predictability, if it's done right, it's very. It still gives you that ooh and ah and that e for a moment and they did that we all knew the turn was coming and it gave us that that wow that euphoria of a moment and you know what you got to give you got to check the box if you wanted to give it a grade a letter grade that's an a plus because it hit all the it hit all the strings you know you had the title change you had the drama you had to read you know the what went why and how and it checked the boxes there i cannot wait to see um the fury <laughs> On, on a Rhea Ripley, you know, because they showed some of it. If you looked at it on Twitter X or you seen it on X, when she was going back to the, you know, heartbroken, going back behind Gorilla, and boy, that demeanor on her. So Rhea Ripley looks like a, when she's a real pissed off woman, I, 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 be careful. So I can't wait to see that on Monday Night Raw. Security is going to be vamped, uh, especially when Liv and Dominic uh, peeks around um, and show their faces. Boy, they got a bullseye on their back. So, we get the second match of the night, and I and I want to hear your thoughts. You know, comment below in the comment section your thoughts on that live, and and Rhea Ripley match, and what's your thoughts? Next match of the night, you got Braun Breaker taking on Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Title. Now, I'm going to be totally biased. Um, I, I'm going to be totally biased. I'm going to be honest and brutally honest. Huge. I am a huge from day one Braun Breaker fan. Going to NXT, taking tons of pictures, making T-shirts of Braun and his uncles, a big fan of the Steiner brothers. I was rooting like a Mark. You know, when they call Mark, yeah. You could have put a capital M on me for Braun Breaker. Um, I, I, again, I always said it. I say it time and time again. Even before he got on the main roster, I, if you look at Stan and Deliver versus him and Carmelo Hayes, on that vignette that they have um, by the WWE Network, I'm on it with, with Terrence. From our channel when they ask us who do you like to win braun breaker or carmelo hayes and i quickly said braun breaker he's the future and and i you know i have that i i was on i would have the privilege and i'm going to be forever in the archives of the peacock or the wwe library standing deliver braun breaker and i and i called it two years ago braun breaker is the future and he's on display he arrived and in big fashion um i thought the match the first match between sammy Zayn and braun breaker at Money in the Bank was a little more crisp, much more storytelling, much more smoother than this match here. But at the end of the day, Braun Breaker showed his dominance as a champion or, or soon to be champion as up and coming rising star and totally, you know, not decimated, but beat a Sami Zayn convincingly. I mean, that spear off the ropes, at, you know, they say he, he clocks at 23 miles an hour uh, per ropes and nailed Sami Zayn. It's believable because he took him out and knocked the damn win out of him. You're gonna have you're gonna need more than three seconds if you get hit by a spear at over 20 plus miles an hour in your adamant. And it told the story. And right there, that not much, not much to say much there for Braun Breaker winning that. Now, what does he do next creatively? Now it's on it's on creative now. Who steps up against Braun now? You have and again, me personally, and I know a lot of people want to see this. But I personally don't want to kind of see Braun go that route. If they do, fine. Ilya Dragunov and Braun Breaker. Seen it plenty of time on the NXT brand. Um, we've seen it a couple of times already on Raw. If they do it as his first title defense, we all know Ilya's not going over. Um, if they do that, then that's fine. I kind of would like to see a break Brunson Reed, you know, give something, give an obstacle to Braun to try to overcome, like a big Brunson Reed. Uh, you have Sheamus. Wouldn't mind seeing Sheamus and Braun Breaker, where the older, where the older veteran, you know, who Sheamus looks phenomenal at his age, 
um, and his presentation and, and his ring general, you know, along with a Braun Baker who's up and coming, who's a sponge, who's athletically gifted and, and is the future up against a, a Sheamus. I think that that program will go really well. And I think it will it will be very something that I'm in for to want to see. Um, you have so many other options, you know, even you know what? Even others, even a carrying cross on Monday Night Raw um, with a Braun Breaker, wouldn't mind seeing that as well because Braun is, it's believable if Braun goes out there and destroy all, even the old AOP members to try to jump him. Even though he, and at the end of the day, he still gets beat up with the numbers game, but I could see him doing some spearing the crap out of AOP and then carrying, getting his hands on him finally. And then to leave some stipulation matches on a program where AOP's bow from ringside against Braun and Braun. You know, all those things. Again, there's plenty of time for that. I just wanted to throw that out there. I would like to see where Braun Breaker goes. Remember, he has to, there's a lot of, the Intercontinental Championship, what Gun Gunther has done to it, has put a bar that is set up high for every incumbent champion from here on out. From, you know, I thought Sami Zayn was okay. Um, I thought he held it just enough, just right. He beat, all right, you beat Gunther. You had some good matches here. Now you dropped it to Braun. Okay, fine. That's good. Cool to go. Now, Braun, take the baton and run with it. I'm all right with that. I'm not going to go crazy. Sami Zayn did a phenomenal job there. Maybe Sami Zayn, a, a lot of people want him in another storyline on SmackDown, but we'll see what happens for, for Sami Zayn going forward. We get the United States title matchup. Oh, by the way, letter grade, you're going to give it a B plus. It, it it went to the point. It didn't it didn't linger. Um, could, could the match have been a little crisper or smoother yeah you could do that between braun and and sammy but think what i like i said if you're getting hit with a spear at that velocity and that speed in your midsection i have no i, I have no doubt that all the, the average person or, or even the special athlete will be down more than three seconds if you get the wind knocked out of you you're going to be knocked out for at least 10 to 15 seconds or in the world of wrestling, you only need three seconds and it's over. I don't see 2.99 and you kick out or get your win back. That's a tough one. So I, I'm that's why I give it a B on that for Braun and Sami Zayn. Let's go on to the United States title. Logan Paul versus LA Knight, where I think 10% of the people were actually behind Logan Paul and 90% was all over LA Knight. Uh, Logan Paul comes out with Machine Gun Kelly. He helped. He comes down and escorts him down to the ring. Again, you add the world of entertainment along with wrestling and 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 of course it makes a perfect marriage he comes down there logan paul like him or don't like him and again you got to worry about logan paul in the ring forget about what he does outside of the square circle outside of the walls of the WWE. sometimes he's a gaslighter some people like to say certain stupid things to gather the heat because they could take it they thrive off of it they like gaslighting people they like people coming at them because they stay relevant now he had said some phenomenal or not phenomenal some unfathom that's the correct word i correct myself unfathom um opinions about certain things that happen outside the world of wrestling and in the real world that a lot of people did not like you know who are upset even if you agree or disagree with him that's what happened to happen away from the wwe that's nothing to do in the in the as a competitor as logan paul the in-ring performer logan paul he brings it i mean that moonsault that he did um, on the ropes, balance with the tippy toes, and any moonsault on the outside. For also work, also work for Logan Paul. LA Knight um, had that. It looked like a brain buster from the top rope. That looked like it was kind of dangerous. Uh, I don't know if that was meant to be like a brain modified brain buster or superplex, but it looked. And I'm glad no one got injured. Um, I'm glad that it looked good on TV. It looked good from from watching along with it. I, um, some great spots there when the brass knuckles was machine the Kelly getting involved, trying to give the brass knuckles to Logan Paul. And, of course, LA Knight prevails and becomes the United States champion. Long overdue for LA Knight, finally winning gold in the WWE, um, the United States title. I kind of need to see him go on a little bit of a nice, long, longevity run where, where LA Knight put some prestige when the, when the legend of Knight, like I believe he said that the legend of LA Knight um, begins. I kind of want to see him, you know, put some prestige on that United States title. Everyone wants to know what's next for LA Knight as champion. Um, you got a lot of guys in the wing, a lot of young guys on SmackDown chomping on the bit to take a shot at LA Knight. 
Uh, my, my partner, Chef Dan, likes uh, Santo Escobar to be his first opponent. I kind of tend to agree because I first said Carmelo Hayes. I know he's been going back and forth, and it's been spicy between Carmelo and LA Knight, but I don't want it, um, Carmelo Hayes to be his first feud due to the fact that Carmelo's going to lose. And I understand it's okay. Carmelo just got to the main roster. He's young, and there's still time. But I kind of want to see that build where make it feel – special like a rumble like this even if it's for survivor series i'm okay with that but his first few right off the bat i wouldn't mind having it to be santo escobar um personally you know you, he could try to deal with legado fantasma with angel garza and umberto and you know and, and so forth wouldn't mind to see that we'll see what next what's next for the united champion uh low uh and what's next for logan paul does he take time away from the wwe uh maybe out of out of sight out of mind cool off um i personally think we don't see logan paul until royal rumble i think we you know the rest of the 2024 go cool down go, not go away heat but go away cool down for logan paul and when the when the rumble hits when he hears his music um people's like ah oh, that that do it again and, and 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 you want that you want logan paul you don't want logan paul i per this is me personally i never want to see logan paul get cheered by the crowd i think he's a classic heel and i think and it's not it's not a disrespect it's not a i hope it's i hope you know if logan paul ever hears this i don't want him to take it as a disrespect or a slight it's a good thing if you get people to dislike you with the booze and the negative heat you you're over it's better than getting no reaction if you come out and you get crickets that's not good if you get some cheers or you get booze it's a good reaction it's a reaction it's a pop and that's what you want for a performer for logan paul when he returns at the rumble if he does then he gets that that pop unless if he comes back at that netflix show I mean, a lot of things happen on that Netflix um, day one, you know, for the WWE. We move on here. Let's go. Um, letter grade on this match. It's this one's going to be. This one, I'm happy LLA won. Wasn't my favorite match of the whole night. I'm going to be honest with you. But it wasn't terrible either. Just because it wasn't my favorite match of the night wasn't terrible at all. It was entertaining. It was good. I'm happy LA then won. I, I'm excited for him. I'm going to give this B minus if you want to letter grade it. Um, I'll give it a B minus due to the fact that it was there. We, it, we needed a champion change. Um, Logan Paul, we, I'm so excited and so happy for LA Knight winning the title. And I, yeah, that's where it stands with that. That's my letter grade on that. We'll go into the WWE Women's Champion match. We have Bailey versus Nia Jax, um, Queen Nia Jax. Remember, Nia Jax won the Queen of the Ring tournament. Gives her the right to take on Bailey for the title. Bailey. In, uh, channeling an inner hugger. I like the, the jacket she wore and looked like a, a throwback a little bit to Bailey the hugger when she was coming up from NXT. Um, back and forth, good match there, good psychology match there. Nia Jax continues to always show that she's improving, taking away her stereotype of unsafe worker. Even the, the, um, a couple of times she hit her bunzai the, the, on, on Bailey not just once but three times two two of the times she bounced and, and, and safely she got the pin eventually but tiffany stranton came out as a distraction we thought tiffany was tiffany's intention was to cash in that title because she had she was accompanied by an official referee came down with her of course got interjected couldn't couldn't really give the fully cash in of course typical things that we see when they try to cash in and they never get to get the announcement so she still keeps the briefcase um that's when naya takes advantage and of course gets the victory personally for bailey as the run as a champion it was okay it was okay run um she needed to be that champion at wrestle at wrestlemania um it's just um undue circumstance that bailey had to drop the title i would have liked to bailey have uh gone a little bit longer give me a couple at least three more months with bailey as the woman's champion i would have liked it but a lot of times people are complaining about bailey's aura or lack of a, of aura or or excitement as woman's champion i don't know why but if you see the iwc they're complaining about it i thought bailey one of the original four horsewomen looks natural it fits her running a running holding a title and it makes me beg, beg the question here and it's totally off topic but i have to ask this question um those that are listening to me in the wrestling community what's the dislike for the four horsewomen i think they really bought the level of women's wrestling to another to i mean where it is now you see mercedes renee sasha banks no one likes her in aew 
there's so much negativity so much heat go away he can't stand her why she's a four horse woman um even becky lynch currently currently semi-retired or without a contract just resting her bones resting her body you know motherhood and all that when she was champion oh she's boring go away when charlotte flair came when charlotte flair um was champion oh here's charlotte again there was so much negative ire to charlotte with the title and not and all oh, it and so much negativity and also now bailey oh she's not no aura Bailey, I think, is the least dislike of all four of the horsewomen, but there's still that group of people that don't like Bailey either. And I ask myself, why so much negativity to the four horsewomen, where they're pioneers in the wrestling business for the women's? What they have done for so much for women's wrestling, they're no longer divas. They're no longer the, the, the days of brawl and panty matches were, were totally out the window. And it was a little bit before them. But what they put on from NXT to the main roster, they revolutionized women's wrestling all across. Now, you know, look at look at the, the impact it has on TNA, All Elite Wrestling. Um, Noah, yeah, Stardom, excuse me, not Noah, Stardom. It, it changes the industry so much and they get so much hate or dislike by I mean, and of course it might be a small group of people but i never could understand why with the four horsewomen listen five more years from now we might not see no more neither neither four not even one maybe all five four will be gone and they're gonna be like damn we missed out on we missed the bailey we missed a, a trish we met i mean uh uh becky lynch we miss a sasha mercedes monet we miss a charlotte flair let's hey you know what i'm i'm all for when charlotte returns from her injury let's go there's so many storylines you know i still want to see a Rhea and charlotte rematch i want to see a re i want to see a charlotte and and jay cargill they teased it i gotta see it you know becky lynch jay cargill never got that i want to see that there's so many other stories there you know i want to see another match between bailey and bianca belair i kind of want to see more of that uh they they those two those ladies know how to tell the story but i digress i i don't know what i asked that question what's the dislike on the four horsewomen i mean i could never get it i i personally feel that they're so respectful speaking about a match that didn't have a lot of respect in it um of course cm punk versus drew mcintyre with special guest referee seth freaking rollins seth rollins of course come out with a referee shirt um with some really silver color pants like whoa you know he really makes a statement um, I like the fact that uh, Seth Rollins tried to call this match down the middle, you know, not trying to get uh, involved. Um, you see the shenanigans there with, you know, Punk and Drew. Punk got his, his best of his temper got to him. Drew McIntyre had to go over in this match, rightfully so. He beats Punk after Punk put him to sleep, but he couldn't. And, of course, he saw Rollins pick up that. that it was a that dollar store bracelet but it has aj and larry the dog's name on it don't mess with larry the dog and he thought seth rollins was trolling him by picking up rollins as the referee is taught and when you're refereeing you're taught get whatever debris out of the ring either you you slap it to the floor you pick it up put it in your pocket or you know and so forth and rollins picked up the picked up the bracelet put it on for a moment so it won't get damaged um you know maybe because his pants were too tight to put in his pocket and cm punk took it as him as a rib ribbing him for that bracelet it got the best of him of course some claymore by drew mcintyre gets the victory and and drew mcintyre had to go over in this match um drew mcintyre needed this victory you lost he lost at home in scotland at clash of the castle money in the bank yes he won the bank but had to fail cash in got screwed over by punk um this feud is not over i kind of wanted it to be over um because drew grabbed the bracelet again after rollins got knocked out too he took the bracelet put it on himself and this feud is going to continue with punk mcintyre uh remember in, in october we have bad blood could it be leading to a hell in the cell match you know we'll see personally i would love to see a triple threat hell in the cell match there um, just have all these guys go at it like a bunch of man, uh, um, animals or a fight pit you know but it, if it's in a fight pit it will benefit cm punk although if you saw his ufc run you may not think so but i kind of want to see a little more 
I kind of want to see more. Um, at first, yesterday, I was like, I wish the feud was over on the stream. I got upset. I was like, oh, I wish this feud would die already. Um, because here's the thing. I, at 24 hours thinking about it, once Punk is done with McIntyre, where does McIntyre go? Where Does he go to the World Heavyweight title matchup? But the champion has beaten him. You know, both the champion and the challenger has beaten McIntyre in more than one occasion. Gunther as Intercontinental Champion defeated McIntyre several times, and Damon Priest has too. So where do we go with those two? Um, do they do? I, I don't think McIntyre moves up to the World Heavyweight Title spot. Um, he's going to be just in no man's land. We all know he signed a contract to do some movies. He might be get, taking some time off to do some movies and stuff like that. But I don't think so. I think he's still here to the remainder of 2024. Um, where do we go? So you keep him on this feud with CM Punk, and we go forward. Um, McIntyre continues to troll and do, do phenomenal trolling job on the internet with Twitter, TikTok, and stuff like that. I got to give him credit. I, again, I've said many times on my watch along, not a fan of Drew McIntyre. I think he's a little boring when he cut when he tends in the ring and cuts a promo on live mic. On Raw, I tend to get tuned out. But what, but I got to give him his credit and his flowers is he's doing good stuff on the, on Twitter and on TikTok. I don't know if it's helped or aided by a director or someone pitching him ideas, but they're very creative. They're very entertaining. But then when you get to that live mic, it's like, you know what? Get the energy drink because the melatonin is going to hit. But let's see when Drew McIntyre goes forward. Um, He's doing the best work of his career, many say. So let's see what happens going forward here. Um, rematch or more, uh, more levels to this feud between these three men. That's a big time drama between them. And what Rollins and Punk, everybody wants to see that one on one between those two. But we right now we have to finish this program with Drew McIntyre. We shall see. Oh, letter grades. Excuse me about that. I forgot about that. The Bailey and Nia Jax. I'm gonna give that a. I'm gonna give that a. I'm gonna give that a B plus. It was a good match. Very good match. Bailey. Um, the Tiffany Stratton drama. Cashing in, not cashing in. Nice B plus there. This match with Drew and CM Punk. I'm gonna give it an A. I'm gonna give it an A because there was a lot of drama. There was a lot of that. Um, Punk being blinded by that bracelet. For us, listen to us. That looks at it, it's only a dollar. Why is he worried about a dollar bracelet? Have AJ or someone make you another one. But it's not that. It's the significance. The names on it. Larry. Um, AJ, you know, why they made it for them. You know, maybe it was something, it was a gesture of kindness of someone who made it for him and to punk that meant the world to him. Sometimes the simple things in life is what is valuable to us. And that's what that storyline told to punk and it blind him for a moment. Um, the story that was told there, that's why I'm giving that an A, an A to an A plus on McIntyre and punk. Yes, even McIntyre going over, it was the right thing. It was A plus. It was called and it was done to a perfection. Um, I can't, I can't knock it. I can't say, oh, you know, it was good. Even the length of the match between them. So that was an A plus tonight um, for McIntyre and Punk. Um, in my opinion here. We go into the World Heavyweight Title, the World Heavyweight Title match. Damian Priest versus Gunther. Gunther, the King of the Ring winner, earned the right to wrestle Mr. Damian Priest, El Campeón, at SummerSlam. Back and forth. This was a physical, hard hitting match. The chops, the kicks, the my god, the, the elbow. It was a, what they call a stiff match. They, you know, boy, WWE had a lot of advertising. They had wing stops on the ring, they had prime energy drink. They, I believe, they had a wireless co company on the mat. They should have had a Bluetooth or, or they should have had a, a hymns because that was talk about hard hitting. That, yeah, that was hard. That match they were hitting and, and they were stiff. There was a lot of stiffness in that match back and forth there from the chops. Gunther at one time was bleeding from his chest because, remember, he still had the bruises from Monday Night Raw against Finn Balor. Of course, we see some backstage promos before that. Uh, Damian Priest irate what Dominic Mysterio did to Rhea. And he was and they were chasing him. They were looking for him in the backstage. And, and Finn and Damian kind of talked it out, tried to say, I apologize. And good thing for Canary. Uh, Canary, who watched along with us on the watch along, said, why is Finn Balor apologizing to Damian Priest where Damian, Finn hasn't done anything? They, uh, you know, Damian is apologizing for coming for talking short to Finn Balor, and then Finn apologized back, but he hasn't done anything wrong. So she caught that on the watch along. Kudos to Canary um, from Are You Watching This? youtube podcast as well joining us on the watch along i wanted to give her her shout out and her flowers on there 
And um, Gunther, in a big upset there, pulls off the opportunity, builds off and becomes the world heavyweight champion. But before he became world heavyweight champion, we had Finn Balor come out to the aid or come out at ringside for to encourage Damian Priest. Even Gunther kicked uh, Finn in the face, knocked him down. But then when Gunther gets hit with the South of Heaven, here's the pinfall and... Finn puts the foot on, on the rope for Gunther, where Damien was like, what? And he turned around, and of course, true evil Finn Balor, he'll turn. I, and I love the shot with, where Priest just grabbed him by the throat, wanted to rip his throat out. You know, so so much realism in the facials and expression, and I loved it. And then Gunther hits with the power bomb and gets the victory. Gunther becomes the world heavyweight champion. Let me tell you something. That aesthetic look on Gunther with that world title, it, it hits it, it fits i i wanted damian priest to retain but you know what i love the storyline the drama that's coming out the the split of judgment day you know we now we see Rhea and and damian got screwed and you've seen they 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 had a bond a kindenship of i guess they call them the ter the terror twins um together baby face because we know her you know if you look at the internet they're internally they're have babyface run we've seen damon priest with jay uso yeeting kind of turning babyface slowly but surely on us and of course now you could go with finn as the heel along with live they could been they could be plot they have plotted this all along we also in 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 months leading up to SummerSlam on monday night raw you know live coming out of the car one one shot and then it was finn coming instead of dominic you know they could have been plotting this demise of judgment day or Rhea and so forth where and then you saw on on twitter jd mcdonough ripping the shirt in half of the judgment day and you know you know where his legion is a tag team champion with finn balor but where does carlito fit in all this or carlito not an official member of the judgment day to me i think he's going to be the messenger that's going to go back and forth bringing stories and i think that's who damian priest is going to get his hands on a monday night raw so it's going to be interesting on monday i didn't want to talk about that in the beginning with the live and rhea ripley story about you know spoiling until we got to tonight uh, to this moment in time with judgment day but judgment day right now they're in a civil war will they be rebranded you know will they be be named judgment day and something else who knows you know or, or they or this is where Rhea and damien go on their own single runs on their own um with the mutual respect or will they join forces to watch each other's back because they have common enemy you know damien is so mad at finn and Rhea is so mad at Dominic and Liv, and, and Damien wants his hands on El Sucio, Dominic Mysterio. So we'll find out how that goes. More storylines, because right now it makes you want, you have to tune in for the aftermath on Monday Night Raw. And that's what you want to do here going into the winter. You know, now summer's summer is coming down to a small wine. We've got about six weeks of good weather, hot weather, and then back into, you know, the changing of the climates. Of course, you know, the kids back to school, the the early daylight stuff and now wrestling continues with these storylines to close out the year you're going to get captivated and that's what they're doing here with wrestling you got to like it my this match here is another a plus i'm going to give this an a plus gunther wins everybody was happy to see gunther everybody was down on damian priest as the world heavyweight champion calling them the, you know some you know they may, you can see it was 60 40 of the fan base disliking damian 40 percent i'm one of those 40 percent that wanted Damien to continue to rule, I, although I am a big Gunther fan as well. Thought Gunther wasn't quite there yet, ready to be the world champion. But you know what? I'm going to sit back and relax and enjoy it. What's next for Gunther? That's the question. I know everybody wants to push Ilya Dragunov um, to me for Blash at the Berlin. I'm not going to be opposed to that. At first, I was like, eh, we've seen, you know what? We haven't seen it in a while. Um, we haven't seen it. They tease it on the main roster. Why not give the fans in, in Germany that match that's going to they, they're going to you know you're having a ple in germany it's going to go there europe is so loud and so awesome to watch on a on a watch along watch them how they they embrace wrestling and love it um the fan base just think of that match between Ilya and gunther at bash of the berlin it makes sense um i kind of at first i was like eh, now i'm 100 percent on board with it let's go Gunther Ilya Dragunov, his first title defense um, on the PLE uh, across the seas in Germany. I'm for it. Let's go for it. I don't want to see it against Ludwig Kaiser. Um, I know he's recovering from an injury. I, I know everybody want kind of wanted kind of to see that 
Um, no, I, I kind of want to see Ilya versus um, Ilya Dragunov versus Gunther. Me personally, and again, let's go. Let's see what's next there. What's next for Damian Priest? He's going after Judgment Day. He's going either. He wants to get his hands on Finn Balor. You know, maybe he has to go through Carlito. Maybe he has to put some. Maybe maybe in Bash of the Berlin, it's, it, it sets up a mixed tag match. I don't know where they're going with Bash of the Berlin with storyline. We'll see because everything uh, it, WWE put themselves in a really particular um place. Bash of the Berlin, the timing over Bad Blood. I kind of you kind of wanted Bad Blood to be right after SummerSlam, unfortunately, because. All these feuds that's coming out of SummerSlam, there's a lot of, no pun intended, a lot of bad blood from Liv and Rhea. Dominic getting involved with, with and Judgment Day. Whole, the bad blood between between that, between Punk and, and Drew McIntyre is still not settled. Even Seth Rollins, a lot. And literally that premium live event hits. But you got, unfortunately, they had a two shoehorn bash of the Berlin. I wonder if they're going to put other competitors that are not currently like the women's tag team, the men's tag team, or both Raw and SmackDown, uh, maybe the United States title, you know, maybe the World Heavyweight title, and hold off on these other feuds for a moment. Um, we'll see. You know, you also have the Wyatt Six. Well, do they go to, Ber to Berlin and wrestle there? You know, we all that, you know, you could pivot and make not make it a B show because you want to give Germany the best. You don't want to shortchange any wrestling fans anywhere across the world. You want to give your best. To those people that are paying a lot of money in any walk of life or any any um entertainment business but maybe you want to hold off on these bad bullet fuse and, and kind of prolong it where bash of the berlin you don't know you you want to have some payoff um you want to give some and you wanted to pay it off at bad blood not bash of the berlin so I, I, it's interesting how the creative and WWE is going to navigate with bash of the berlin sandwich in between bad blood that's just me let's go to the main event ladies and gentlemen the main event where everybody's been waiting for cody rhodes taking on solo sokoa for the undisputed wwe heavyweight champion now bloodline rules i'm on friday night smackdown in cleveland it was agreed upon cody rhodes agreed that he will take the stipulation of bloodline rules from solo sokoa um, so Cody Rhodes is one and zero on the bloodline rules. I I gonna have a whole thing about it afterwards. One thing I did like, um, we all know that the tag team champion were in attendance. Uh, the new tag team Solo uh, Solo Sokoa's new bloodline in Tomatanga and Jacob Fatu, but we know, but we didn't see them. He, Solo comes out alone, waiting. Cody Rhodes goes into the bus. You see the whole bus tour. We got Pharaoh the dog. I always like to see Pharaoh the dog. We seen Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson giving him a pep talk to Cody Rhodes. Does does that mean you know we've seen in the past that Cody Rhodes would like to have a manager? We know that bond and that relationship that they have with he has that with Arn Anderson. Will that be something in his corner? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe Arn Anderson will be a manager role for Cody Rhodes down the line. Only time will tell. We see him coming through the gorilla position. We see where his mother-in-law puts his is Cody Rhodes robe. Of course, the mask. Out comes Cody Rhodes. The match begins. Boom. Bloodline rules. And then it gave us about, what, 25 minutes of pure wrestling match before the shenanigans and, and the interference from the Bloodline members came in. About 25 to 30 minute mark, which is good. I saw some good wrestling there. Of course, we get the Bloodline interference. Out comes Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, similar to WrestleMania 40, back and forth. So, uh, Jacob Fatu comes out. What a enforcer. There's a spot where Jacob Fatu has Cody Rose on the table, goes for the moon, goes for the the splash. Looks like he hurt his foot. Pictures reveal later um, today that he was in a walking boot. So Jacob Fatu couldn't put weight on his foot. Looked like he was injured. Um kayfabe wise uh couldn't put weight on it but all of a sudden the music hits the tribal chief the with a new t-shirt comes out roman reigns comes into the massive pop of the crowd hits the superman punch hits and solo sokoa right in the mouth my goodness and co and anna spear ooh, ah. And of course, Cody Rhodes gets the victory, similar to WrestleMania 40. Um, everyone and their mother helps Cody Rhodes get over. Um, I wasn't so happy at the moment. I want listen. I want. I've been a big. I'm still am a big so, uh, solo Roman 
bloodline fan. I kind of wanted this to be a bad blood to return for Roman Reigns. I know you got to do it in the big stadium show um, because there's so many people, 50, 55,000 plus and so forth. I get it. I kind of wanted Jimmy Uso to be the one to cost and screw Solo Soko in this moment. And I know everyone's not going to agree with me. I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I might be the only one who actually thinks this way um, personally. I kind of want to leave Roman closer to war games. Now we got September, October, half of November to, because war games is at the end of November. Almost got three months, 90 days to try to build for war games. What are we going to do to Roman within? Um, is he going to wrestle Solo Sokoa? To me, that's kind of a, I kind of want to see that at Rumble, to be honest with you. One on one, Solo Sokoa versus Roman Reigns. I kind of want Roman to try to try to get his hands on Solo, and Solo making it impossible for Roman to get his hands on him, putting obstacles and and roadblocks for him to get his hands on. Because remember, we want to create, look, we want to prolong the creative, but still be compelling. Because if you give if you give everything at once, what's next? What's What's the, you run out of ideas and storylines, then you start forcing stuff. I kind of want to. This is the way. If I had the pencil, I would have liked it gone. Jimmy comes out and causes that Solo Sokoa to lose the match. Cody Bertain. Then, uh, it, of course, we didn't know Jacob was going to get injured. But if you know, it kind of maybe things happen for a good reason because if Jacob couldn't continue, then how the hell they're going to beat up on Jimmy? Um, where I think they were both, you know, Cody doesn't get involved. Jamie, uh, uh, they start beating up on Jimmy Uso, but then out comes Jay to help him. Where, you know, Jay has a, a, a kinship with Cody and now his brother. Well, they're beating up on Cody. He comes out and he really, and he helps his brother get up. And, and they kind of, not kind of mend a little bit of the fences there on the premium live event, the brothers and, and all that stuff. Then they could bring, and then sets up a match. For, for again, again, bad blood, Jimmy Uso versus Solo Sokoa. And I know everyone's going to say, so what do you do with Cody Rhodes? That was a good question. I, I wish I could give you that answer. I don't know. Even now, even after him beating Solo Sokoa, I don't know what's next for Cody Rhodes, to be honest with you. Do not say Roman Reigns because it, it that's not, there is no premium live event currently right now that I want to see Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Not right now. If you would have left the title on Roman Reigns, then you could say, you know what? Bad Bullet would have been a perfect, perfect premium live event for Cody Rhodes to drop the two to beat Roman Reigns because he would have beaten Hogan's record. Then you would have bad blood because Cody has a lot of bad blood with the with Roman and the bloodline. And he finally, and then you could have had Cody Rhodes become the undisputed heavyweight champion, finishing the story there. And then you would have bet, everything the best of both worlds. But again, we can't, we can't. We can't undo history. It already happened. Cody is already the champion. We move on. I don't know what we do with Cody Rhodes right now. And this is the part that I wasn't, I was not happy for because I didn't express it on the watch along. And it took me 24 hours to why it was bothering me, why I didn't like it. I, I it, it felt like they bought Roman to sell more t-shirts and to sell title belts. And it's a business. I get it. Wrestling is a business. And look at the money they made with the titles, the red title that they they already they they, they sold over eight hundred thousand dollars of merchandise in Roman alone, and good. It's about making money. But this, you know, what that showed me? Roman Reigns became the top baby face of the company. So what do you do? And he hasn't. He's not the world heavyweight champion. When is the wrestling fans going to turn on Cody Rhodes? It's going to happen right now. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen. What they happen in all elite? It's going to happen to poor Cody. That's why I kind of wanted Cody to, you know, Roman to take, get rid of, get done with the Rock itch of fighting him at this WrestleMania, take Hogan's streak, beat Hogan's streak. We have now a tan colored person like myself that I can identify as the number one longevity champion of all time. And that would have been done out of the way because right now you can't look at Hogan. He came back at the, at the, uh, uh, Republican National Convention and everybody's killing him. Oh, they, 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 Hogan is toxic. 
to some people into the social media. Why not have COVID? That's why I kind of wanted Roman to break that record. Hogan could, you know what? Go retire, brother, with the 80s. You you, you put you in the closet for the 80s, and now it's Roman. But now Hogan's going to live on with that streak. That's why I was so adamant of not having Cody win. I wanted that title, that 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 record. And look, I'm a Hulk Hogan fan. Hey, look, I got a Hulk Hogan. I got a Hulk Hogan pop here. I'm a big Hulk Hogan fan. I grew up a Hogan, but I got to be realistic. I kind of wanted that record to be abolished by Roman Reigns. I wanted him to... You know what? And it is what it is. That's what. That's at the end of the day, it is what it is. But that's just my opinion, my 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 feeling, my thoughts. Now Cody's the number two babyface, or you could even say possibly three because Jay Uso's on fire right now. People want to see Jay Uso. People are complaining that sm that SmackDown is nah with Cody Rhodes as the World Heavyweight Champion with the segments they and. Uh, solo Sokoa, they uh, solo and Roman. Eh. I mean, solo and, and, and Cody. Eh. We need Roman back. Sometimes the momentary fix is not the best outcome for the long run. That's just my thought on it. I'll leave you with that thought there. Um, I understand we might not agree on the wrestling business. We not agree what I just came up with, what I thought with, and I get it. But I'm enjoying it at the moment. I. Uh, didn't I, I, that was my worry, and that's going to be my concern, my worry going forward with Cody Rhodes not being the number one. I know kids love him, and he's going to be a draw because he shows. You know what? He's available. He's avail his availability is phenomenal. His attendance record, uh, he's there. He gets the kids going. He love people love to see his entrance, the wall, the singing. But then when once the storyline, what's next for Cody Rhodes? I ask you guys, what's next for Cody Rhodes? Randy Orton. Everyone wants to run to Randy Orton turning on Cody Rhodes, which is going to be compelling. But is are you do you want that now to finish 2024? Do you want that to have that in your holster in case they go they go Roman and Roman and Rock? Then you have Cody and and Randy for for WrestleMania because wrestling is compelled with storylines. There's a lot of storylines where you could build a lot of animosity or a lot of history between Cody and randy orton then having it short change at a at a crown jewel or at a bad blood or at a song at war games war games this should be the ultimate battle of like the survivor series five on five four on four in a cage um control mayhem but we shall see where WWE creative goes um I just hope that Cody continues to stay hot, continues to be the number one um, baby face in the company, not overtaken by Roman um, and not overtaken by, I don't think he'll be ever, ever overtaken by Damon Priest, not with this turn, but or, or Jimmy Uso. Oh, Jay, excuse me, Jay Uso. Jay Uso's on fire right now. Or the Wyatt. I know that some of the, most of these guys are on Monday Night Raw, but let's face it, SmackDown needs, uh, need, needs, that baby face and maybe that's why they're doing it they're moving in september to usa network roman back on the usa network helps bring draw some more eyes for smackdown for the usa maybe that's the reason why they did it for television situation but only time will tell we shall see where it is um comment below in the video let's uh, join us for monday night raw we'll have the watch along here with the with the hill the ring crew we'll be doing our watch along here um all the insights uh, our analysis and our thoughts on reaction as monday night raw transpires and and what we're seeing on our tv screen uh, myself the hill the ring crew will be here terrence mr chef dan mr d walk from uh, d walk nxt time from the recon reaction the puwf podcast for the uh pre a underappreciated wrestling fan yes you can find them on recon reaction as well as thank you for are you seeing this a podcast with miss jazz marie and the the Hollywood Canary, the unspoken, the uncanny Hollywood Canary. Thank you, Canary, for joining us on the watch along. And don't forget Mythfit Nation, K Fake Cartel, who are part of our network as well, a friend of the program of uh, you know Krishan, Chris Deshaun. Check out his video. He had us he pretty much had almost the predictions for SummerSlam right on T. Um kudos to him, you know, giving him his flowers here this afternoon. But again, enjoy your afternoon, everyone. We'll see you next time. On the Heal the Ring podcast, may the sports be with you and yeet. See you later.